Salut tout le monde, c'est Capette de Coin Academy. Je suis en compagnie de Nick de Solana FM, un bloc explorer sur Solana. Ce n'est pas le bloc explorer, on va dire, officiel de la Solana Foundation, c'est une initiative d'un membre de la communauté. Et le but, bah, du coup, c'est un bloc explorer, c'est de pouvoir retracer ce qui se passe sur la blockchain, avoir un visu complet de Solana, tout simplement. Donc on va faire un point aujourd'hui sur ce que c'est Solana FM. Aussi une question que je me pose, eh bien, quel est le business model d'un bloc explorer, en tout cas celui de Solana FM et on va lui poser aussi la question pourquoi il a choisi Solana plutôt qu'une autre chaîne pour pouvoir avancer. Nick, merci beaucoup d'être avec nous. I switch to English now. Yep. So, what is Solana FM? Can you explain us a little? So, Solana FM in general, right, is a full data suite where, you know, at the very front for customers, for users out there, for public users out there, it's a simple explorer for you to understand data that's going on inside the blockchain. So that's in general what we do on the, on the, on the surface area. Okay, so when you say Understand more what is on the blockchain. You mean transactions, NFT, uh, checking the ways maybe. Well, what kind of data you can find on the Block Explorer? So what you can actually find on the Explorer, right? It's just generally just just general data for users to understand. So so things like transactions, accounts, blocks. Um, maybe maybe go into greater detail. Um, understanding like how much um, how much power is needed for a transaction to run. So, so very granular details like that actually can be gathered from an explorer as well. Um, but generally what we want to do is, when we offer data to users uh, who are viewing the stuff via the explorer, we want to make it easy, like you don't have yeah. to think so much about it and just be able to understand what's going on. Yeah, and why did you choose to do Solana FM? Because we already have other block explorer. Why did you choose? Why you are different <laughs> from the official one, let's say? All right, so, so the official explorer is actually open source, right? So the, the official explorer actually focuses on RPC or, or, you know, the data that's available directly from the blockchain. And um, we know very well that um, there are many problems that, that surface within the explorer. There are a couple of things like, how deep can we go in data? Um, how deep can the UX be easier for users to understand? and how usable it can be. And the last bit will be, how much faster can it be? So one thing we've been trying to focus on would be trying to make the experience easier, like brainless for users to understand, like you can just view a transaction and be like, oh, I know what's going on. So rather than, rather than, rather than that, right, in you know, Open Source Explorer right now, um, users wouldn't actually be able to understand that. Like they'll be like, um, let me take five seconds and then I'll, Yeah, they're yeah, not I see. Yep. I see. So low latency, more details into the data, more explicit, better UI, better UX. I That's think. right. And do you plan to do stuff about taxpayers, for example, like you use Solana, so you want a good history to send to the government or whatever? Is this something you try to? So this is something that we actually have uh, in offering right now. Okay. Um, we do offer them to a couple of like agencies that work closely with governments. Um, but but yeah, we generally do offer like data points and, and data flows for users to gather for, for people like that to gather, and then they can do tax rebates or tax taxation documents and stuff like that. Yeah, you can do that right now. Okay. Um, and that's actually our core focus. So so many people think that we are actually block explorers and we only build a block explorer, but is actually much deeper, right? Okay. We, we actually don't want to put too much emphasis on just the block explorer aspect, but we're going to build tools, stuff like gathering like how transactions are, how many transactions I have for my smart contract, for my programs. Um, yeah, those, those are things that we want to focus on rather than just the explorer. I see. And I think I can bring my second question, your business model. Because yep. as a just a block explorer, you don't really make money except if you raise money, maybe. You, you have a business model? Have you a name to recruit people, make money for yourself? I don't know. Can you explain? Yeah. So actually how we make money is actually very, very unique. Um, the actual product that you're using, the explorer that you're seeing today, makes no revenue, right? Mm. So we intend to stick to that for quite a while. The reason why we want to do that is because the actual revenue generating machine inside the entire Solana FM stack is actually just the infrastructure and tools. So, In fact, right, that's actually where we want to put more emphasis and focus on. Because when you put more effort to make your data more robust, you can have more data to be put onto your Explorer, right? So that's why for us, it's like, you know, the Explorer is just one part of the entire bigger picture. And yeah. where exactly we earn revenue is generally from APIs, from data, offering data to customers, to protocols, projects in the space. Yeah. yeah so that's actually generally, generally where we can generate revenue from. Okay, and why did you choose Solana? The so the reason why we chose Solana is because of three simple things. Number one, unfortunately to say this, is the right time, right? Like yeah. Yeah. back a year yeah. and a half ago when I we agree. first started off in May 2021, um, if not if, 
for Ethereum, right? Um, I think Solana would be like the second thing to go for. So that was the first reason why. The second thing was that um, I didn't have a huge like knowledge and coverage in Cosmos. Back then, Terra was quite yeah. huge. Yeah, but I, I agree. I didn't get myself exposed too much in Cosmos, and I didn't want to expose myself to something that I'm not very confident in. And the third thing that the third and the most biggest reason why I came on board Solana is because and why I built this in Solana is because data back then was still very hard to understand and yeah. it's still very difficult for devs like, I, I agree. like like devs right like even for devs it's tough for them to understand how, what, what's going on so that's why we've set out like you know what we've got to build something out there to help devs and builders in the space yeah i see that's pretty clear that's very nice and uh, now what's the next step for solana fm so, so, the next, alpha? so the next steps right now is that um we've recently today as of today right like as of recording today um we've just shipped like a developer portal for us to make devs make devs lives easier by allowing them to upload smart contract data onto our platform and they can easily gather customized apis for their own use cases so so that's one thing we're focusing on but moving forward right um, we, want, we want to put more emphasis on the Explorer side because we've been taking a lot of time outside of the Explorer, focusing on the infrastructure and tools. So now it's time to put whatever we've built back into the Explorer. So one thing you can expect um, in the Explorer over the next coming months is even more simplified, more improved UI. So things like, like I mentioned like a couple of minutes ago, how can we make data much easier for users to understand? Like when you make a new order in per se a token swap or when you make an order in a stock exchange, like a DeFi exchange, right? How is it, can I, can I make the experience much easier? Like I can just view one, one, one screen without scrolling and understand exactly what's going yeah. on. So, so that's where we want to go forward towards the next couple of months. And do you have a mobile app? Um, we don't. You don't. But maybe some short alpha will be. We do want to explore that, and we're pretty curious what that can bring to value add users even further. Yeah, or maybe a partnership with the wallets. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so in fact, we do. We do actually have partnerships with wallets. Um, just that we still have a long way to go when it when it comes to building more tools or features. Right. That value add the use case of having wallet connectivity inside an explorer. Yeah. And my last question will be, as a community member, I want some things that do not exist in any explorer. Can I push an ID to you? And if yes, how? Of course. Um, actually, it's very open. Like, we're always available on Twitter. Um, you can Twitter. just tag and label Solana FM. You can even tag and label me. And when you do tag me, right, just let me know what you think should be added inside the explorer. And yeah, we should, we should see how it goes because you know, as, as a community in general, right, if you put your voice out there, everyone can see what you're recommending, what idea you're recommending, and, you know, everybody will know, oh, Solana FM, right, like, mm. the ideas they're, they're doing and they're shipping inside the Explorer, it's not just by ourselves, it's by the community, and everyone actually wants that. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So, we just have to follow Solana FM on Twitter? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Nick. We try to make it quick because this is something very niche, but very interesting at the same time. You answer very well, I have to say. <laughs> so, just thank you and I hope you like. Je repasse en français. J'espère que vous avez aimé la petite explication. Voilà. Vous avez tous les liens en description et je vous dis à la prochaine. Ciao tout le monde. Thank you guys. <laughs>